Welcome back to the Hardware Unboxed News Corner. This week we'll be discussing the rest of Intel's Coffee Lake announcements from a couple of days ago. News that Apple might be developing a CPU so that they can ditch Intel. Nvidia releasing a slower GT1030 and a new NVMe SSD from Western Digital. So earlier this week, you hopefully saw our coverage of two key launches from Intel, their new budget 300 series chipsets like the B360 and H370, and six core Coffee Lake laptop CPUs for their H series. Well, alongside those launches, Intel also announced a collection of other stuff, including new desktop CPUs and new laptop CPUs with Iris graphics. There have been various leaks surrounding the new desktop CPUs for some time, but now they are official. In the Core line, we have several key additions, the Core i5-8600 and Core i5-8500, both of which are six core, six thread parts with clock speeds and prices that place them between the i5-8600K and i5-8400. Then in the Core i3 line, we have the Quad Core i3-8300, which is basically a 100 megahertz fast i3 8100 and that'll cost you an extra $21 so it's not as good value as some of those core i5s but it does bridge the gap between the 8100 and 8350k in the pentium gold line we have three main cpus with two cores and four threads the g5400 g5500 and g5600 each $11 apart in pricing with clock speeds between 3.7 and 3.9 gigahertz then in the celeron line Line, we have the G4900 and G4920 as two core, two thread parts occupying the $42 and $52 price points. You probably would have seen in these tables new T-series processors as well, which are all 35 watt variants of the processors we've mentioned. Not usually the most popular among PC builders, but they do exist for power and thermal constrained devices. On the mobile front, we have four new 28 watt U series processors with Iris Plus graphics the Core i7 8559U, the Core i5 8269U, and the Core i5 8259U. And they're all four core, eight thread CPUs with beefy. 48 execution unit GPUs, and there's also the two core, four thread Core i3 8109U, which features a 47 EU GPU. Interestingly, while these are 8th gen U series parts, they're technically using the Coffee Lake architecture instead of KB Lake Refresh, which is used for the rest of the U series non iris processors. And with that extra TDP headroom compared to KB Lake Refresh, these Coffee Lake U series parts also clock high on the CPU, which is nice to see. Enough talk about new Intel stuff, let's talk about Nvidia quietly launching a new version of the GeForce GT 1030 that uses DDR4 memory instead of GDDR5. In fact, that isn't the only change. The DDR4 version also has a lower 20 watt TDP instead of 30 watts with reduced base and boost GPU clocks relative to the full power variant. And of course, moving to 2 gig of DDR4 instead of the faster GDDR5 also severely limits memory bandwidth. Clock speed reductions do vary depending on the GT1030 model we're looking at, but in the case of MSI's GT1030, the base clock gets cut from 1265 to 1189 MHz, and the boost clock drops from 1518 to 1430 MHz, and that's alongside a drop in memory bandwidth from 48 to just 16.8 GB per second. Annoyingly, these two variants of the GT1030 are both called the GT1030, so there's no way to know which version you are buying unless you specifically look for the memory configuration or watch for a D4 designator somewhere in the product name. I couldn't find any DDR4 variants for sale on Newegg just yet, so it's unclear what sort of price saving you'll get with the slower version, but you, know, you can expect it to be shaved off by a couple of dollars. A rumor from Bloomberg emerged earlier this week suggesting Apple are planning to replace Intel CPUs in their Macs with their own processors beginning as early as 2020. The project, codenamed Kalamata, has been ticked off by executives and is still in the early stages of development. So there's not a whole lot of information in this report, but apparently Apple are making this move so all of their devices, including iPhones and iPads, work more seamlessly together. 
Part of this plan involves software, including a new platform code named Marzipan that will allow users to run iOS apps on Macs. How Apple transitions from Intel CPUs to their own CPUs remains unclear. However, if their plan is to make Macs run more similarly to iPhones and iPads, you'd think they're looking at shifting Macs from x86 processors to ARM. And that will create all sorts of complications as we already know that emulating x86 apps on ARM CPUs isn't exactly a great solution. Maybe Apple has some magic up their sleeves, but we'll just have to wait and see. Intel has finished their Spectre patch rollout, releasing the final patches for older CPUs while cancelling the rollout for some product lines. The end result comes down to this. All second gen core processors and newer, in other words, Sandy Bridge onward, have patches available for Spectre. Penryn Core 2 processors and anything earlier were originally scheduled to be patched, but not anymore as Intel has cancelled their development. It gets a bit more tricky when looking at first-gen core processors in the Nehalem and Westmere lines. Here, about half of the CPU families will get patched, while some will no longer receive Spectre fixes. The Core i7-900 series CPUs from both lines will not get patched, while the mobile processors in the Nehalem line will also not get patched. Everything else, though, from those two lines does have a patch available. On top of this, a range of old Xeon processors will not receive patches, and while it is a bit disappointing that not every vulnerable processor will be protected from Spectre, the only CPUs that will remain unpatched are pretty old. Nehalem, for example, was released in 2008 and Westme in 2010, so if you're using a CPU from 8 to 10 years ago, it's probably time to update it anyway. Vega 20 has appeared in an ID list in a Linux driver patch. Yep, that's just about all there is to this story. Someone looked through the ID list and there were some references to Vega 20. The current line of products, including Vega 56 and Vega 64, falls under the Vega 10 ID list. So it is possible Vega 20 are newer or in some way refreshed versions of current Vega products, but who knows, as this is just a list of IDs. Western Digital has released a new NVMe SSD imaginatively called the WD Black NVMe SSD, not to be confused with the WD Black SSD released in 2017. This new drive is also branded as the SanDisk Extreme Pro M.2 NVMe 3D SSD. Anyway, these drives are available at 250, 500 gigabyte and one terabyte capacities for 120, 230 and $450 respectively. In PC Perspectives review, Alan Malventano says these SSDs have outstanding performance and a competitive cost per gigabyte figure, making them a great option for those after an enthusiast SSD. So that's something to keep in mind if you're after a new NVMe SSD. In great news for the graphics card market, Bitmain has announced an Ethereum ASIC miner that will be available in mid-July. The Ant Miner E3 ASIC will provide 180 mega hashes per second of mining performance for just $800, which makes mining on GPUs a complete waste of time for this particular cryptocurrency. Apparently you need nine GTX 1060s to get that sort of performance, which would cost thousands of dollars with current prices. So when this ASIC miner is released, GPUs won't be as sought after for Ethereum mining. Of course, this doesn't necessarily mean the GPU market will return to normal straight away, as miners, you know, they could just repurpose their GPUs to mine a different cryptocurrency. But when these sorts of products have hit the market in the past, we have seen GPUs flood into the used market and GPU prices take a dip. So hopefully that happens this time as well. Final news topic for this week, Razer has launched a digital game store. Yep, for some reason, Razer now has a game store. Luckily, if you buy games in this store, you'll just get Steam or Uplay keys, so you won't have to install yet another game launcher and manage another library of PC games. Apparently, the Razer game store will have a lot of games from major publishers and feature exclusive discounts, and there are rewards tied to Z Gold and Z Silver or something. So. Interesting news from Razer, and uh, of course you can check out their game store, we'll have a link to this, that in the description below. That's it for this week's News Corner. Subscribe to get this segment in your subscription box every Friday, and be sure to hit the bell icon too so you actually get notified. Thanks YouTube for that one. I'll catch you in the next one.